Any comments, questions? Can you hear me? I can hear you, but let me see. Maybe it's not on the maximum. I... Again, please. Yeah, can you hear me now? Yeah. Oh, okay. Uh, so my my question is in the in this new new group of light uh, right left right symmetry. Uh, um, so we have SU to L cross SU to R cross U one. And here, I mean, what are the particles uh, singlet here? Because U one, we have U one because we have like singlets, right? Um, let's just uh, let me write. So today is I'll start answering. Um, sorry. Diploma course 2021, lecture 18. And let's talk C sine neutrino, left, right, or not. We have to think today what to do. Now, you are already asking. I wanted to come there, but you're asking. When I have the left-right symmetric gauge group, which I said would be SU2L cross SU2R cross U1. And now we know what U1 is. Let's call it B minus L, right? You Are you asking me why there is U1? And no, I mean, so if we have U1, then we have singlets, right? In the group. Which, sing, which singlets? I'm confused. Which? For example, in the standard module that we consider as U to L cross U1. For example, let's go back. A. So let's step back just a second. So we have the analogy. Let's write. It's always useful to write as U to L cross U1 hypercharge. Yes. <clears throat> and for example, here, um, right electron is, for example, singlet, right? So this is the standard model. Let's write it down. Yes. Okay. Now my question is, what is the singlet particles in the new group that we, in the gauge of right left? Right, but I'm confused. What does it have to do with U1? This is what's confusing me. What do you, this is a good question you're asking, but it's independent of U1, right? Even if I didn't have U1, ER would be just a singlet of SU12. You agree? Yes. Look, this is all I we are saying that this is the SU2 doublet and this is the SU2 singlet. That's the thing, the meaning of this is W interacts only with left. That's all. So, so you see, that's why the group is SU2L. SU2L means this. So let's think about the, we're asking, what is the question analogy? Okay, I like your question, but it depends on U1. Even if I had only SU2L, without U1, I would still, I would still uh, 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 say that the R is a singlet. So this was a digression on the standard model. So we go back to, back to left, right. You're asking a very good question. The group is there. The assignment is this, new EL, new ER. So here we have a very different picture, no singlets. And this makes all the difference. I will have to talk about it today, but what you're asking is here, there is no singlet. So in other words, what happens, what we have here is that here in this direction, you have a gauge boson that we call WL which interacts with L only. But there is another WR 
interact with our own. This is a difference from the standard model, fundamental difference. It makes all the difference in the world because we are saying MWR, of course, is much heavier than MWL. This is why we didn't see it. And we even know what the limit is. It's roughly 5 TV. The colleagues at LHC help us with this. They do it by not seeing. In the standard model, the standard model then is the limit of left, right, so that MWR goes to infinity. It doesn't exist. We don't want that, we are saying. We can't want that. If we, if we like the theory, by any reason, we decide to accept it. It cannot be infinite because neutrino would be massless. We know that. That the scale has to be low. So this is the difference. And this will be very important. I'm going to come back today. The whole lecture will be about your question. So see, as I keep going, whether I'm answering it completely, OK? This is the partial answer. And then in a few minutes, I go back. But you may tell me, however, but why should I worry about left, right? Why? A lot of people are saying that. Forget it, say. Forget it. I'm lazy. I don't want to learn a new theory. OK, forget it. Just, however, just keep new R. Because that's very little work. You say, look, I'll just keep new R. It's true that you told me that new R should exist. But now that you told me, I steal it from you. So in other words, I go to the standard model plus new R. Because now I will have the theory of neutrino mass. And I will now build a theory, which we did yesterday. And we found out, remember, that we'll have the, now we will have particles which are called nu L. I like to work with particles of the same chirality so that I can understand how they mix. So I introduced just the complex conjugate of nu R. Remember, there is no big deal. This is just, I don't know, I gamma two. This is for Lorentz reasons, but it's just new R star. So I can work with these two guys. And we found out that there is a neutrino mass matrix. I don't want to repeat the lecture of yesterday, which is like this. Zero, neutrino is massless. But it couples to, and remember, we found out that this would be called MD transpose. If there is more than one generation, this was MD and this was MN. You remember this from yesterday, I hope. Yes. Yesterday, we just took that MD, we took one generation. This is if there are more generations. We wanted to have a formula, we can use it. We can study it for one generation. Look, if there is more generation, you will get here by the same reasoning as yesterday, you will get the eigen, call it eigenvalues. You block diagonal the matrix in the same way. I call it eigenvalues because they are eigenvalue matrices. They're really matrices. But it's a trivial thing. One is a man. And the other is the light one from the determinant. There is a minus sign. It's MD transpose. It's not MD square. It's just like this. This will be an exercise for you guys. I don't know whether on exam or I'll give it for you. you this is just generalization of what I wrote yesterday. So please, I don't need these details today. Prove it. This is just block diagonal. You see at the end that it's very logical, okay? How does neutrino get a mass? Well, neutrino gets a mass because it couples here and then it propagates. And MN is very heavy, so it has to be one over MN. 
because the determinant of this matrix, you see the what what I mean, the trace of the matrix M nu n is roughly M n. Remember the seesaw mechanism, M n is much bigger than M there. And determinant, <coughs> sorry, M nu n is minus M direct transpose, M dir. So it fits. The determinant is a product of determinants. So this is, uh, sorry, determinant. Why did I write this thing? It's not M direct transpose, it's the determinant of this. And anyway, for one generation, which was much simpler, let's just write it down. We will have Mn, the heavy while, and then M nu would be minus M direct square, it's just a number divided by Mn. <laughs> Sometimes, sometimes you will write people write here MN because it's just one state. I write big to capital in order to emphasize it. Okay, so this is the C. So this is now we are saying we don't want to think about left right symmetry. We have a theory of neutrino mass. Now let's go on. Let's understand it. M Dirac, of course, is some Yukawa Dirac coupling times V. This is completely equivalent with M electron is Yukawa electron times V. Comes from the same Higgs mechanism of the standard model. Think of that. Remember that nu E is a doublet. It's complete analogy with UD, the quark doublet. So M electron is always in the analogy with the M down quark. Of course, they are not the same, but they come from the same source and M Dirac comes from the same thoughts as the amp quark. Neutrino is the up state. From SU2, remember, if you don't think about color, who cares whether there is um, something you call neutrino or up quark? W doesn't care. For W, all these guys are equal. W is color blind. We, we often say like the photon. Okay, that's a nice way of saying it. Okay. So, so this would be the picture and we want to understand it. Three things we want to compare with Weinberg just to see if Weinberg was right. Remember what Weinberg wrote, the effective five theory. Weinberg wrote that M nu is, is V square over lambda. We call it lambda Weinberg. Whereas CISO says basically the same formula, but there is an interesting difference. There is Yukawa Dirac square, V square over, over what did we call this? MN. This is the new scale. Weinberg's call, and this for us is a new scale. We know what it is, is the scale of this particle. So here how Weinberg reason, Weinberg says, look, M nu is roughly, I don't know, um, well, why don't we write it so that it's more clear? This is the absolute value. I don't care about signs. I just want the estimate of the sign. So we said, Weinberg says this is equal V square over M nu. And so this is roughly V is the order 100 GV. So this is 10 to the four GV square. M nu is roughly 10 to the minus 10 in GV. This is roughly the situation. So. Mr. Weinberg says, look, this is 10 to the 14 GV. Forget it, you'll never reach it. Okay, that's what Mr. Weinberg says. Whereas, this is if Weinberg tells you, okay, you tell him, well, wait, 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 you're saying, but look here. 
Amen, on the other hand, is, is V square, Yukawa Dirac square over M nu, which is 10 to the 14 GV, Yukawa Dirac square. And the question is, what is Yukawa Dirac? But look, Let's pause here, but neutrino and electron live together. They are siblings, weak siblings. So we're saying, well, let's see, for example, a natural value is Yukawa Dirac is Yukawa electron. I don't know what it is. Remember that Yukawa up for the first generation is basically equal to Yukawa down. They have very similar masses. So I'm gonna try this similar. How big is Yukawa electron? Who can remind me? I need help. I'm forgetful. I get up late. I'm waking up. Mass of electron over mean. Very good. Yukawa electron is. Actually, we can even write precisely it's G over two mass of the electron of MW. Therefore, it is roughly one MeV over 100 GeV, which is 10 to the minus five. So if Yukawa Dirac is similar to Yukawa electron, that implies that Yukawa Dirac would be 10 to the minus five. So you see, Mr. Weinberg is cheating us with the way he writes his operator because he doesn't know what the origin of the new physics is. And it's very likely to be this. By the way, he likes this CSO mechanism, he says. Then he should be clear to us. So look, then Mn would be 10 to the 14 GeV times 10 to the minus 10. In this picture, this could be a 10 to the four GV, but this is 10 TV. So you are telling now, you are saying, oh my God, maybe we can even look for it at the LHC. Maybe it's seven TV, maybe it's three TV, maybe it's 15 TV. So you ask yourself, is this, are we gonna find it at the LHC or maybe new collider? And by the way, you have to address your questions because you and I are saying, look what we are saying. And you, you should, please, when you do physics, I'm here once again emphasizing to you because I see that majority of people don't understand this. Someone tells you, I have a beautiful mechanism. I tell you why neutrino is light. Because there is this guy, and you see why we have to think about this. CISO says, CISO says, New is light, equivalent exists N, so that Mn is much bigger than Mw. And I see that majority of people accept that. And it's very interesting because the majority of people that accept them, they tell their friends and their families that they are physicists, that they study phenomenal physics. But why should you believe that? The first question you ask people, well, how do you test this? What does it mean that you are? Uh... Well, it's very easy. So how should I test this? Well, I have to produce them. Or this will be ideal, or at least have a theory have a theory of Mn and M Dirac. Either or. This is of course less exciting, but maybe interesting. Let me remind you, when Glesho wrote just analogy, his standard model, 
1961, Glacier writes the theory and he says, the G Fermi over square root of two is G squared over eight MW squared sine squared theta W. No, E squared. This you know, sine squared theta W. So look, this is what he wrote. Then there was also the, this was from the interaction G over square root of two, J mu weak, W mu. Then there is also interaction plus G over cosine theta W, Z boson, J mu Z. And J mu Z is proportional to T3 minus Q sine squared theta W. So you can measure theta W You can even discover the, all the effects of the Z boson and measure them. When you measure theta W, you, you predict, you predict MW. So you see, although the energy is, and, and MW comes out to be 80 GV, and they didn't have, enough energy to do the experiment. But we all got very excited at that time. Why? Because there was a clear prediction. You had the theory. But if you don't have the Z boson, imagine that you don't have the Z boson, you just have this, she Fermi. It would be useless because you have no idea of what theta W is. So if you want to have the, if you want to convince someone that CISO mechanism is good, you have to give them a theory of of MD Iraq or MN. But ideally, eventually you say, well, that's for the moment, but tomorrow we will produce it. And you even tell them, look, it has only 10 TV. But remember what we said, the theory looks like this, new real ER, or instead of ER, I can work with ECL, the antiparticle C E R transpose, and I work with other particle which is N L. This is a singlet, no interaction. Does not interact. Does not interact. So you say, okay, but look. Yesterday we noticed that I was told this that that a mix neutrino and then we said yesterday there is a small mixing between neutrino and electron and neutrino and then this is new and mixing and how big it is it is epsilon new n is a water. M direct, if it is a matrix over MN, or for one generation, M direct over MN. So we said yesterday that the cross section to produce then must be proportional to the square of this, which is M direct square over MN square. And this is from the CISO mechanism, M nu, the absolute value, of course, over MN. And remember how small it is. It's 10 to the minus 10 GV divided by 10 to the four GV. I think yesterday I made, I even said that it was bigger than this. It is 10 to the minus 15. Am I right here? MU is 10 to the, not 10 to, yeah, 10 to the four. We, we found out, what did we find for a man? Let's go back. Yeah, 10 to the four GV. So in other words, the cross section is 15 orders of magnitude smaller than what would be the usual coupling, okay? This is zero. Not just today, but 30 years from now, 50 years from now. 
we cannot produce them. Why? Precisely what you asked me before. N is a singlet with a tiny mixing. To new. And remember, even neutrino, it's hard to see. In most of the experiment, neutrino is just missing an edge. It took ages to find neutrino because the crazy guy doesn't want to interact with anybody. Neutrino is a fantastic particle. So first I have a problem even observing neutrino, and then I should observe N, which couples to neutrino, forget it. It's some tiny coupling, which is in the CISO picture. So this is in the CISO picture. So if you like CISO, then you should forget about N. So I'm trying to convince you that what I what my message is, without left, right, the whole picture is hopeless. It's just words. We are physicists. We cannot accept explanations that cannot be probed experimentally. Because then we can as well accept religious explanations, but we don't do that as physicists, okay? Even if you decide to be religious, you don't accept the, the religious explanation why it rains. You have to have a correlation between the different events that you can go and measure. Okay, please don't ever forget that. If you wanna do physics, you have to do it with all the uh, integrity and responsibility. So I don't, I don't want to bug you with left right symmetry, but if I don't tell you a few words, then why in the world I'm speaking of this right-handed neutrino? Any questions here? Remember what we wanted, by the way, when we, when we found out, you know, the beauty of this picture, the CISO has something in common that shares with effective operator of Weinberg. In both of these pictures, neutrino is Majorana. Therefore, there is a violation of lepton number by two units. And we found the process. Call neutrino is double beta decay. Electron, electron, neutron, proton. Sometimes I say neutron, sometimes I say down quark. They shouldn't convince you. This I should call WL, just to emphasize that the electrons come out left handed. And here we go through the famous neutrino Majorana mass. Oh, M. Well, M nu, M nu in this picture is M nu Majorana. And this was very interesting to us. Now, imagine now that we are saying, okay, okay, you convinced us, okay. So what will the left right theory do for us? Can it do anything? Well, you just asked me half an hour ago or less. When was that? Half an hour ago. You said, but there are no singlets. Where is the singlet? There is no singlet. New E left. New ER. WL acting here. WR acting here. In other words, now in this theory, new R is a real particle. In a sense, I can produce it. How do I produce it? Well, the way I produce W, how do I produce W? I take some machine that has proton, for example, 
Inside the proton, there is an anti down quark because of quantum mechanics. There is another proton. It's a big ring near Geneva. Inside the proton, there is a U quark, and they can produce the W. That's that's what they are doing every day, right? But right, we can also produce W right, right? Now there is something beautiful if you do WR. We will produce it with WR minus. This is the uh, this is the work I've done with my friend Kyung in 1983, which has started something which is called lepton number violation at colliders. It's a new paradigms. So not just low energy experiment, we have delta equal to process at colliders. Why? Look what happens. WR minus produce, what does it give me? An electron? It's right-handed. And here I produce the particle that I call nu R. We can even say, if you wish, ER, we could say that nu R enters. But remember new R or N for us, remember N is nothing but basically new R star. In terms of quantum others, I could also say that to produce N, it doesn't matter. It's a Majorana particle. It doesn't have an arrow Majorana particle. That's why we got neutrino double beta decay here. So, I can get an electron coming out again by changing the NDWR again. And this of course can decay into quarks, which we called some quarks, I don't even care. Quarks really are hadrons. I'll have to give you a lecture on that. Quarks don't exist as elementary particles, they hadronize. What you get in the experiment, it's like pions and stuff. In other words, just like neutrino less double beta decay. Think about this, okay? Let me draw it again. Let me draw neutrino less double beta decay. Let, 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 look at this. Let me, let's think of neutrino less double beta decay. So let's draw it once again. We have a down quark entering. Now let's do it in terms of quarks. Down quark entering becoming an up quark. So I can have also WR in, a, in neutrinoized double beta decay. I have an electron coming out ER. And I have a Majorana mass term for N, just like neutrino. Remember, complete analogy, if there is left, there is right. Are you all following this? Please ask me if this is not clear. In a left-right symmetric world, there is left right symmetry. Another WR, another D, and another U. This is neutrino as double beta decay through WR. And of course, N. And in that amplitude, let's call it R is proportional to one over MWR to the fourth power. We could call this G Fermi, right? And the MN, just like neutrino. And here the propagator, which we could write as P square minus MN square. Remember the left-handed amplitude was, who remembers? It was one over MWL to the fourth. M neutrino, it's my Rana, P square minus M nu square. 
This is WR exchange. This is WL exchange. Now, M nu is very small, uh, P. P is around 100 MeV. So here I can ignore M nu square. Oh God, why does it happen? I can ignore M nu square, it's very small. But here I can ignore P square because MN is large. So in other words, AL is one over MWL to the fourth, M nu over P square. AR is one over MWR to the fourth, one over MN. By the, I mean the, the absolute value, the signs, let's just write, there was some sign issue, okay, but we are writing the absolute value. And this we estimated is one over MWL to the fourth, M nu is 10 to the minus 10, divided by, well, I don't wanna put the numbers. Why am I bugging you with the numbers? It's very easy, you can put the numbers. I can have AR bigger than AL. All I need, one over MWR to the fourth, one over MN, is bigger than one over MWL to the fourth, M nu over P square, which requires that MWR to the fourth is smaller than MWL to the fourth, P square over M nu MN. which is less than MWL to the fourth. We can even put the number P is 10 to the minus one. So this is 10 to the minus two. This is 10 to the minus 10, 10 to the four. So what is this? Ten to the eight. Am I right? 10 to the minus six? No, something is wrong. One. Sorry? My numbers are not, I don't like my numbers. Maybe it's true. <coughs> okay, the number here would be 10 to the minus, what, four? 10 to the four, 10 to the minus two, 10 to the four, which is a little too small. But if I take, so, so okay, this is a, I shouldn't have put the number. This is the function of MN. It, it was stupid to put the numbers, okay? For MN relatively small, what can happen? WR can dominate. We can put the numbers later, why, why am I? I don't know what MN is, depends what the Yukawa Virak is. I don't know why I put the numbers. This is not it. It is obvious that there's sufficiently four. I think if a man is a water of, of 10 GV or something which requires Yukawa Dirac smaller than Yukawa electron, this could dominate. Okay, in principle, neutrinos double beta decay could be provoked by WR. And the difference is the polarization. You see, if WR does it, they should see a right handed electron. So instead of putting the numbers, what we have to ask the experimentalist really to measure the polarization of 
of electron. So the conclusion is, I, I really, I, I'm putting the number, but the issue is fundamental, forget the number. What I mean to say, if, if E is a R in zero node two beta, then WR is doing the job. Is E is EL in the theory, then of course here WL would do the job, <clears throat> no doubt. So if they find this process, we will know. But look at this interesting thing of WR, okay? This is another report. I think that we can take the break. Let's look at this exchange of WR. Let's look at it from above. Look at it from here. Here I have a down quark entering, an up quark going out, that's U bar entering. Then I have WR, let's look from above. Then I have a WR. Then I have an electron. Right. Then I have this mass term for MN and another electron. Another electron. I get two electrons. You see, I process because delta is equal to. Then, of course, there is a WR which I separated here, which gives me these quarks or hadrons. This is called proton. This is called proton. So we have P plus P giving two electrons plus, you know how we call these hadrons coming out, uh, the LAC you ever heard? <clears throat> I, <clears throat> I would imagine that Alexei talked about it. They go out like jets. You heard of this expression? Yes. Yes. You, you get these jets of particles. You see a quark comes out very quickly. I'll talk about it uh, uh, on Monday, I hope, or Tuesday. Then they hadronize and they go out, of course, because of the initial speed that they got as well as a bunch of particle called jets. So you get in complete analogy with the neutrino is double beta decay. You can get a beautiful physical process at the uh, delta L equal to at LAC. This is the thing that we've done with my friend Kyung which you see for particle physics is even more important than the neutrino is double beta decay. Why? You see, if I do the experiment at low energies, it's very hard to know what caused it. All I see is some electron here. At low energies, this is very important when you have the process like this. This is really a black box. you see only outcome. Colliders is completely different. <clears throat> you see what happens. You produce WR and then this WR decays, right? You produce WR, here it is. And then this decay decays. WR decays, so this WR will decay into electron plus electron plus jet plus jet. So what you do, you measure energies and momenta of these particles. As you know, this is how we discover particles and therefore you measure everything. You measure properties of WR. You measure distributions, you measure the spin, you measure the mass. Remember, you do the W decay, you actually did it. This one is a little more complicated, but it can be done. Mm -hmm. 
you yourselves computed the, uh, remember what you computed when, when we talked about WL, you actually computed D gamma over D omega for WL and you found out this is proportional. I don't remember, was it one plus or minus cosine theta, depend how, how you, whether you take plus Z or minus Z action, something like this. You can actually study the, the, the distribution of the outgoing electrons and check the, the chirality of W and so on. So the same can be done for WR. This is the advantage of collider. We can know, or if you wish, what you really compute, the WR decays into E plus, WR minus would decay into E plus N. You measure these guys because N lives for a while and so on. This is analog of WR computes decays into, uh, remember, N is like new bar. Complete analogy with WL that you computed. And then this guy decays into electron plus jet plus jet. So you can measure everything. You can measure MN also. <coughs> by measuring the final states. You can reproduce the properties of these particles. This is what LAC is looking for. But the crucial thing is for you and I is this. N is physical. It can be really produced. And I tell you what I mean here, maybe I should do the break or maybe not. Let me see if I can go on for a few more minutes. Uh, any questions here? What, what we want to uh, say to Weinberg, what is important to us, we can say the following. The process to look for is this one. Well, it's being looked for. Actually, there are two of them. So what we need, okay. I can say it here. What is the message? We have a door to new physics. Actually, I would argue the door to new physics. Why? We are looking for this process and we are also studying LHC as we speak. The world is concentrated. Or these are the major experiments going on today. LHC, neutrino, is double beta decay. And imagine here, imagine that we find out the right-handed electron. And look what we wrote before, above. I was putting the number, there was no rush. I found out that MWR square cannot be too big. So now we could put the numbers depends on, on us, but obviously there is an upper limit on WR. And we found out if MN is 10 to the four GV, we found that MWR would be less than 10 to MWL. This is ruled out. This is impossible. Times 10. Ruled out. They didn't see it. If MN is say 100 GV, then I will get MWR less than, what will I get? 
there was 10 to the four. If I said there will be 10 to the six, to the four, MWL to the fourth. What is the fourth root of 10 to the six? About 30, am I right? You will get the MWR less than about 30 MWL. This is about the limit. What is this eight times? No, what is this? Am I right? No, this is this is roughly uh, what is 30 times 80 is about 2.5 TV. Again ruled out. If MN is GV. I get MWR less than 10 to the eight MWL and MWR less than about 100 MWL. Even for the MN, you see, if it's so light, it still has to be less than 100. And then, uh, sorry, then what is this eight TV? This is very exciting. It all depends on neutrinos double beta decay. We live at the times when you guys, most of the physics, theoretical physics that you are gonna be studying has been developed in the past. There was a sort of tragic period of some 30 years. My generation, you know, we came down into the standard model. And then the things that we did in the late 70s and early 80s could not be looked for. Finally, LHC is doing this job. And now it's a question of being lucky. That's always in life. One of these two experiments, neutrino is double beta of LHC, discovering new physics would pave the door, of course, for you guys to have something to work on concrete. I'm giving you an example. I had to do this example because we are after, it's our task as standard model practitioners to understand the origin of neutrino mass. And it's a very, very sort of exciting moment for, for this beautiful experiment, neutrino is double beta decay it will decide whether or not there is potentially, you see the physics cannot be very large because MN being much lighter starts losing any sense of this whole picture. So we have to, uh, uh, we have to, unlike Weinberg, what I, what I wanted to tell you, you have to work, you may not like the theory, then work on the alternative. Let me just mention interesting alternatives. One alternative is called MSSM, very popular minimal supersymmetric standard model. This is the supersymmetric version, doesn't matter what supersymmetry is. You can ask me if you wish. This is a supersymmetric standard model. Here, unfortunately, there are too many parameters. And how to make predictions. Here, what I would want to tell you that here, this has been studied a lot. So uh, when I ask my PhD student to work on this, they give up very easily because there is simply, uh, nobody has looked into it very carefully because there are too many parameters. I just wanna, Tell you, I don't think I have to say after the break very much. The left centric, left right theory, however, it's it's completely predictive, and I don't want to bug you. You need the from if you knew the mass of WR, that means if you find WR, you have a theory of neutrino mass. I don't want to bug you with details. One of the main protagonists in this is where. <coughs> The, the ICTP group with my younger collaborators, we have looked into that by particular Vladimir Teo has done great work here. Okay, major contribution. We worked a lot together 
but I want to give him a lot of credit. He's our ex-diploma who went on to do a PhD at CISA. Okay, typical example of, of from Venezuela of, of why we love this program. We get you guys and <coughs> hope to open the doors for you. Uh, Vladimir has done really outstanding work in making sure that you can uh, uh, actually compute things. And then it's another interesting thing that emerged. He took it very seriously for his PhD thesis that you would imagine, oh, <clears throat> but it's an old theory. You are saying the theory was suggested in 1974, five was elaborated. So how come it was not, it's very interesting. It's like studying for exams. You don't study for exams before the time comes. Most of the elaboration what LHC is doing now, because in the past, we just didn't have the energy or the courage to attack the problem because LHC was sort of science fiction. He took the belief in LHC that this is not just true of this theory, of the other theory also have been worked out some logically, have been worked out and even still being worked out because LHC has become reality. It's a good time to make a break. Any questions here? Okay. We can think a little bit after the break. So <coughs> let's meet at 12.05. And think if you have comments or questions, please.
Questions or comments? I just want to say a few more words <clears throat> before I close the subject. Just to tell you, just to make a summary of this. You don't have to remember everything. Just the following. We have two roads to take. One was standard model plus new R or N and the CISO picture. And the other is the full left-right thimble with the CISO picture that emerges in, in the, in the left-right theory. It's not an assumption. This is the prediction from the symmetry break And the reason that we would do here, because the left right symmetry says that exists and you are exists. So this is, we have the horizontal letter, if you wish, we have, a, we have a reason to believe that there is right-handed. Well, you can say, okay, from, <coughs> from the point of view of neutrino, this is the same. However, the problem is here. In the CISO picture, you cannot produce. And here, of course, you produce N through WR. So it depends on the mass, but if it's not too heavy, you will produce it. Okay, what we said. So there are now two things. Crucial thing is neutrino is double beta decay which tells you that if E is left-handed, then we will believe in the standard model, say, plus new R. I don't know how to test it. In this picture, if E is ER, we know that it's a left-right symmetric theory. So I just want to finish this, okay? The crucial thing for us as particle physicists is to produce an N is new R, just I keep reminding you. And the way to produce it, we have a unique way to produce it, which is through WR. Need to produce WR, which then decays into E and N. Let me not do you any, any errors. So to produce W, and I need to produce WR. This is a must. And I get WR decaying, say negative one plus N. So once I produce N, this is very important. N can decay into E, R, plus two jets through WR. And how do I see it? I would have to see the right-handed electron. So you measure the polarization of your leptons at the LHC measure the polarization and you establish that it's going through WR. But remember that I was told that because N and nu, the physical particle, remember in this, in our picture is nu was nu L plus epsilon NL. N was NL orthogonal state minus epsilon nu L. Epsilon was M Dirac over MN. So in other words, there was an interaction we found out, once again, to remind you, G over square root of two, epsilon, N bar, gamma mu, EL, this is very important, W mu plus, proportional to epsilon. Epsilon is very small, so remember, cannot produce N through this. 
Epsilon is much smaller than one. But A can decay into W plus electron. Say W plus the electron <coughs> left-handed through epsilon. That is different. You can always decay. And this has been studied, okay? This is uh, some work which I've done with my younger collaborator, Nemev Shek, who was our postdoc here. Teo, it's always Teo, some years ago. It doesn't matter. The thing is, you see, that we have we have very clear prediction. If, we, if this particle exists, it should decay into the right-handed electron plus jets. It should decay into W. This is very identifiable. And left-handed electron, this is very important. And you can estimate and compute it depending on the properties, okay? So this is what I meant that we could test the seesaw. We can actually test the, I wanna stop here, the origin. And also the nature, we can, we can test. You see what is very important, the nature of neutrino mass. Let me tell you something really special that was emphasized by, by Kyung and myself. And I'll give you a, we'll, we'll, <clears throat> we'll see whether it's on the exam or not. Think about this. N is a Majorana particle. It had the mass term, and remember how we write the Majorana particle. You would write the particle, you can call it, uh, remember N was, was C nu R NL, C nu R bar transpose. This was NL, and you would write the Majorana particle. Remember how you would write it, the Majorana particle, NL plus C NL bar transpose. Majorana particle, is the fermion of that chirality plus the antiparticle, which is obviously nu r plus c nu r by transpose. It's the same thing. This is nu r. And NL is this. Majorana particle. So in other words, N is half of the time particle plus half of the time anti-particle. Therefore, N actually decays into the electron plus W plus 50% of the time. This is this work which makes it very, this is a, you see, there is this extraordinary thing that Majorana discovered that a particle can be half Particle half antiparticle, a neutral fermion like neutrino or N can have this incredible thing. But that means if you produce it <coughs> half of the time, it will decay into the positron and W minus because it consists of the of of the two states. This is obviously physically from what I'm saying. If you produce it on shell but you can actually show it from the interactions, okay? If you are, if you are, want to anticipate me, if you like to play and you have a weekend, you can prove it. You have an interaction, remember, you, for example, this one, you have a epsilon, NL bar, gamma mu, EL, W mu L, let's call it plus. There is also Hermitian conjugate, I don't remember. So you just played with this direction because remember N is NL plus C NR bar, trans, NL bar transpose. But this one, this guy is right-handed. So really you can say that N is some left-handed particle plus some right-handed particle. There is both left and right, and there is particle and antiparticle. 
And this is why you can get both electron and the positron. This is, of course, WL in this case. For example, this one. I leave it for you. My hands are itching. I want to say more, but I think it's much better if some of you can do it on your own. Please uh, think if you have questions. Nobody wrote to me. I said, please write to me if you have questions, if you want to discuss. Well, we should meet, okay, we should make sure we meet anyway on Monday afternoon, even if I'll send you an invitation, but please write to me. I'm a heavy user and I'm afternoons, evenings, you can contact me anytime. Any questions here? You may have questions on the left right symmetric theory or on the Higgs mechanism or whatever. It doesn't have to be. Uh, we are coming slowly to the end of the uh, of the course, so please think of the. Uh, Let me give you a hint here for those of you that want to try to this. For example, this you can prove. No, white transpose. When you have two different fermions, NL bar, comma mu EL, this is true of any fermions you can write as EC, R bar, comma mu. And CR, where ECR is CEL bar transpose and NCR is CNL bar transpose. You have to use this relation, not this is equal, not identically equal. Okay, you should prove this. It's very easy to prove. So the hint number one is this, and number two, and is my runner. And then the rest will follow. Okay, look, I feel like I don't wanna start anything new. I could, sometimes I go overboard. So I will finish earlier today because it's not good ever to talk anything new. And I, 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 I have a lot more to say here, but, but well, see if you guys are interested. So what we can do, we can chat a little bit. You have, you have thought about the dates for exam? Oh, sorry, Professor, before we continue, can I ask a question? Please, that's what I... <laughs> uh, 
Yes, in, in, in the, when we saw the left-right theory, um, we know that introducing this new thing, this new doublet, right doublet, uh, we have a new W boson that couples only to left and the only couples to right. But we also have the new C bosons, and you said that they not fully couple to the left and the right. So right, it's just it's good to remind you of that. So uh, well, the best is that I write. So I go back to sharing screen. Okay, we'll postpone the, the exam. Uh, this is a very important question. Uh, and I don't want to, uh, I didn't want to bug you with details. I don't want you to study theories and make too much of the study of the theory that, that I've been developing. You know, I don't know to oversell it. Okay, I just wanted to give you the message, what it means. You see, the, the main purpose of my last two lectures is what's to explain what it means to have a theory of neutrino mass. It means that you can have physical consequences predicted by theory that you can go on and measure. It's very important. So left, right, symmetric, the standard model, just to remember the standard model, we step back. There is something, there is a W boson, which I can call WL, couple is only to left. But the Z boson, remember the current of the Z boson. There is T3, which picks up left. So it's purely left-handed. Unfortunately, there is a piece like this. As you know, electromagnetic charge is left-right symmetric. So this has both left and right. So J mu Z is not J mu L. We cannot say that. For example, J mu Z for neutrino is actually one half L, purely left-handed. But J mu electron is minus a half, there is a projector L, but then there is plus one sine squared theta W. And this is not projected on L. So this is not left-handed. If sine squared theta W was zero, this would be, um, this would be purely left-handed. So similarly, obviously, because of the analogy between in left and right. So I said, I will call it WL and ZL. This is a kind of bad name. I don't know how to call it, okay? Maybe we should just call it Z, would be a better name. So in a left-right symmetric theory that is WR, and the new guy ZR is a bad name because of, of left right symmetry. If Z is not coupling to L, Z prime cannot couple to right. So we could call it Z prime. This is maybe more fair as a name. That will be an interesting exercise for you guys to try to find the the, the form of the current, it has to be orthogonal. It's an interesting exercise, okay? But what I, in order to do this really to, that's the thing, you know what I would need, what I didn't discuss with you, a very important question. When you have this left right rheumatic theory, it breaks down to the standard model through some new Higgs, we call it Delta, it become a notation which decays, which, which breaks down to U1, electromagnetic through the tablet phi. It turns out delta, you see the theory is left symmetric, so there must be some left-handed 
and some right-handed scalar. So that we must achieve the delta L is zero and delta R is non-zero. This is called spontaneous symmetry breaking of parity. Parity is spontaneously broken here. And how it's broken, there are two fields. They are connected by parity. Parity connects them, but only one of them gets a web. So what you find out that MWR is given by the gauge constant times delta R and also M of Z prime, which I also sometimes call ZR is, is, is of course proportional, proportional. It's not, it's not really, a, there will be a different coefficient just like in the standard model, but it's proportional, I can say. And also the right hand in neutrino, Mn is proportional to delta R and what we call Yukawa coupling of delta. From here, masses always come to Yukawa coupling. So the first scale is, so this is where WR gets a mass from delta R, and then the phi gives a mass, of course, to WL. This is the standard model picture. This is really, you know, Weinberg Salam picture that we say, but in particular, the clear paper is the, where you can read Weinberg, 1967 is what we know. And once I give you the, the, the quantum number of these guys, it turns out that delta L, delta R, are SU2L or R triplets, not doublets. The picture works correctly if you choose triplets, okay? The choice of symmetry breaking is of course the choice of the Higgs, which is A, which is proposed by the fathers of the theory. You propose, you write the theory and you propose the, uh, uh, there was some trial and error. When we studied spontaneous symmetry breaking, this was my thesis actually, we started with doublets, okay. I, I in my original work, the, 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 the work starts with Mohapatra and myself and my, my thesis, this was in 75, but details are in 79 in my paper from my thesis. And then we revisited with Mohapatra and studied triplets. There is also paper of then later on in, in 79 again and so on. You don't have to look at that. This I'm just mentioning if there was anybody interested. Okay, I don't want to bug you. But you need to give this. I'm giving you a wrong long answer. I, I would need to specify details of the theory for you to work them out. Except that even without knowing details, you know that the WR, that the new neutral boson cannot be purely right-handed because then the the left one would be the, the other one would be purely left-handed. I hope I'm I'm sort of answering. It's hand waving, but physical hand waving. More questions? You could profit for the you know Friday uh, relaxed mood. By the way, I can tell you if there is any of you, but you wouldn't be free. If there is any of you interesting in neutrino mass physics, 
from the next week on, I'm giving a course on this. So please write to me if you're interested and you want to follow such a course in which I discuss the, I spent a few months discussing what I told you in two lectures, all kinds of issues related to the question of neutrino mass. It's at your level, it's an advanced master's sort of course that PhD student take. This is at the LMU University in Munich. In case you wanted to know more, but at this point, I just, I don't wanna be heavy. I do want you to know that there is a well-defined theory and this is the original theory of neutrino mass. It's not just that it was invented. There are many models that people hook up a posteriori. That's very easy. What you and I should be interested in are the theories that predicted the phenomena before experiment. Here, neutrino mass was the original prediction years before oscillations proved it. Okay. I don't think I want to say anything more. Since I don't think that you have thought really about it, let's, let's come back to it. You can tell me on Monday, or you can share some thoughts now on the exam. We are still on time. I don't know how you feel. Guys, uh, Professor, some of us discussed about the exam uh, time. Uh, so uh, some of us uh, uh, decided, I mean, uh, to have the exam like uh, after the GR exam. When is GR? Uh, it's probably. Well, roughly. It's early March, uh, May, I think. Early? Early May. May. Early May. Okay. We can do it after GR. For me, it's the same. I just want to accommodate you. It's good that we you know, tell Patrizia in time, otherwise she gets nervous, as you know. So uh, we should make her happy. I'll tell uh, Giovanni who is now. And no, you know, you can take, you can think about it. You know, the exam can be three, four days, up to seven days. Most of the time, the students actually want to spend more time. So I say, can we have more time? They like to sort of work on the problem. Well, I'll try to make it not too hard. Some, something like, let's say, four days, so that you are not, you don't feel the pressure of time, and you don't have to waste too much time unless you want. You will have a few more homeworks on the material I covered since the course was accelerated. Um, okay. Then let's do it like that. Unless there are objection, we'll shoot for the uh, after GR, any thoughts that you have, write to all of us, okay? Don't just write personally to me. I'd like everybody to see the, uh, it's much easier than to communicate. Okay, guys. If there are no more questions, I, I see you on Monday. Have a nice weekend. See you. Bye. Ciao. Thank you. Bye.